Are we? Are we going? J Johnny hasn't deafened yet, or I mean, muted yet. Welcome to the MVSS Esports League of Legends tournament. Uh, we have another exciting game today in Division A: Windermere versus Alpha Blue. Are you guys excited for this match? I'm excited. I'm excited. I am also excited for this one. All right, and. Uh, uh, these two teams are probably one of the highest seeded uh, teams in uh, Division A at the moment. So we'll see who comes out on top after this game. And we're yeah. hopping in straight to the draft. And it looks like a Ash Band coming out from the side of Windermere, hoping to probably shut down Lunar. He is known to be one of their strongest players uh, on Alpha Blue. And uh, as well as an Elise Band coming out. What are your thoughts on that, Brandon? Um, for me personally, you know, um, uh, Elise is a really good ban. Uh, she, you know, she's really able to gank as early as level two. She has great tower dive potential with her uh, repel. Um, and then it looks like going from the side of uh, Alpha Blue, they're actually just starting both of their bans on high on price. Um, Shen and Vlad are probably his top two most played champions. So you know, they're really trying to target ban him here. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I, I do like how they are banning some of these AP junglers like Elise. Uh, it does uh, pressure them to perhaps lock in a Gragas, maybe? Yeah, and really, honestly, anything we could see coming out here at this point. Mm -hmm. And Kiana ban also coming out. She is, she has been a high priority uh, in uh, the meta these days, including the World Championship, actually. Uh, Zaya, Zaya coming out from Windermere, yeah. A, another pick from Lunar. It looks like they're just trying to pick out these strong AD carries like Kai'Sa, Ash, and Zaya. Uh, and now Windermere have an AD carry advantage. I'm looking to see if Lunar will lock in a Varus, perhaps. Also a very strong AD carry in the meta at the moment. Yeah, I'm really interested because um, we, we do see Alpha. They did ban the Kai'Sa. However, uh, Windermere having that first pick, picking up the Zaya right away. So I'm interested to see uh, what uh, Lunar will be picking up instead. You know, I think I remember last time, last game I watched from him, uh, when he was up against Azai, I believe he uh, went uh, Misfortune, actually. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it could really be anything. Nautilus coming out, flex the jungle or support. Nautilus is pretty strong, though, recently in the meta here with all that CC he can dish out just by himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, due to the World Championship, we actually have to look out if it's a Nautilus mid as well. Oh, yeah. Providing a lot of CC right there. Super carry here. Yeah. <laughs> super carry don't be setting up for those team fights very well in the mid lane. Although they sacrifice uh, a bit of carry potential, they do have like a lot of CC for the team fights, as I said earlier. And it really just sets up high M fam on the Zaya, able to clean up in those team fights with her feathers. And now the uh, third pick coming out here for Alpha Blue right before the second band phase. Let's see what Spongebob will chooses here. Yep. And both junglers actually do come out. They are both AD junglers. So we're probably looking at an AP mid or an AP top lane to answer. They don't want a full AD team. That'd be very, very difficult. Close the game out as if the game gets longer, the Nautilus can't stack armor or, you know, Jarvan can't stack armor. It's going to be very hard to kill them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, with both of these junglers here, you know, they are both uh, early fighters. Um, they are also early engages, you know, uh, Jarvan with the uh, the flag and drag, and then Lee Sin, you know, he's able to go in with the Q. Later on at 6, he has his uh, kick to push an enemy into the team. Yeah, and those sick plays coming out from the Lee Sin is probably what we'll need as uh, the team of Alpha Blue is very heavy engaged, looking to create a lot of space for their Caitlyn to just deal damage from the back line. Yeah, now we can see this uh, final pick here coming out, for, or this final ban, rather, coming from Alpha Blue. Cho'Gath. Banned out and for high I'm price in the top lane, most likely. And what are your thoughts on that ban, John? I do know that you do like to play Cho'Gath a lot, so I want to see your views on this Cho'Gath ban. I think Cho'Gath's pretty strong currently in the meta. You can flex him full tank or AP, honestly. Put him in the mid lane or in the top lane. His Rupture can land on all five members of the team and can be pretty deadly in team fights. One Rupture could just decide the team fight right then and there. So I mm -hmm. think it's pretty scary, especially with his true damage uh, ultimate can just execute people like half health late game. Yeah. 
Uh, and we do helps. see that uh, AP mid laner, the uh, Orianna, and possibly a Cassidy coming in. You know, both both those uh, AP mid laners. We want to have a nice uh, mixed uh, variety for the teams. We don't want to go stack full one type of damage. Otherwise, they could just build resistance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, and it looks like the top laner will be the final pick for Windermere. Hovering that Fiora is a split split pushing monster at the moment. Uh, we'll see if they lock that in. Nyrelia hovered. Okay, looks like the Camille is coming out here finally for Windermere. Their final pick, and let's see what Alpha Blue returns. Uh, Camille currently actually pretty good in the top lane against a lot of matchups, but there are some that are a little difficult for her, so we can see here Morgana pick coming out. Yeah. And Morgana would be a really good answer to the Nautilus, the Lee Sin, and the Camille, able to just negate most of their CC and dive potential. And it looks and so, like they will lock it in. So it's either or Oriana or... Okay, Leona top, it's looking like, for Alpha Blue. I really like that pick, actually. <laughs> I think Leona does a pretty good job against Camille. She's pretty tanky and can stun up Camille and escape some of her damage, but I think early game she will actually have some difficulties. Mm -hmm. and but later in the game when she builds the resistances, I think she'll have a pretty solid time. Yeah, and if you're looking at this matchup in the top lane, it looks like Leona just wants to go even with Camille in lane and then provide a lot of support for her team in the later parts of the game. Yeah. yeah I'm um... excited for this one. Jonathan, uh, which matchup would you say you were most excited for? Um, I think I'm excited for the Leona Camille matchup. Honestly, I want to see how well Gummy John does against High Iron Prices Camille. Uh, if he has a lot of experience with that matchup, maybe playing Leona top, then he could maybe carry this game here. So I'm excited to see that. All right, and um, yeah, how about uh, Alex? Uh, same as Jonathan, actually. That top lane matchup is very interesting. I want to see where it goes and how it affects the game overall. All right. Me, personally, I'm excited for this mid lane matchup. Uh, you know, we do have the uh, ranged first melee, um, but I, I want to see if uh, CXY is able to pull it out of his hat and be able to overcome the uh, ranged disadvantage. Um, you know, those roams, he's going to really want to try to get those off, get these Zaya ahead. Zaya can be a super carry. Yep, that is true. And uh, looks like that wraps it up for the draft. We'll see you guys after the intermission break. What are you willing to lose? You cover your wounds, but underneath them, a million voices in your head. Another twist of the knife, a turn of the screws, it's all in your mind And it's fighting you on yourself, the storm is coming, wow, kid What you gonna do now? It's your reflection looking back to pull you down So are you gonna die today? you gonna do now? It's your reflection looking back to pull you down. So are you gonna die?
All right, and welcome back to Windermere vs. Alpha Blue. Uh, I'd like to give a quick shout out here before the game starts to uh, One Bite Pizza Reviews in the chat, always giving us that support. And with that being said, let's get into this high octane, high stakes game. Oh, indeed. And right before we do hop into this early game phase, I want to talk about the drafts a little bit. I'm really excited to see how Alpha Blue play this one. They have a really uh, team fight oriented comp right here, uh, looking to create as much space uh, for the Caitlyn to do her damage. Uh, and on the opposite side, we have Windermere with what looks like to be a dive comp, uh, looking to shut down that Caitlyn before she's able to do her damage in the team fights. Yeah, uh, me personally, is something I'm looking at here is going to be that Wombo combo with the uh, Oriana and the Jarvan. You know, Jarvan's really going to just want to try to ult, get as many people in the Cataclysm as possible, and then she's able to um, ult and just knock everyone up. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be great. Especially paired with that Leona Solar Flare. It's just a devastating combo if they actually land it. I'm excited to see if they do, and now you can see them all kind of grouped up here in this topside bush, invading the Topside jungle here for uh, Windermere. Ooh, walking but, away now. Doesn't look like there'll be, there'll be too much action here in the early game as both teams are looking to scale up rather than take these early skirmishes. All right, we'll just have to see if this Lee Sin is able to impact the early game and get this bot lane, mid lane, and top lane ahead uh, before he does eventually fall off a bit. <laughs> And I just want to look now into the bot lane. We do see the um, Zaya. She has cleanse instead of heal. So, you know, if she does end up getting low, she's going to have to play more careful and possibly just back. Um, and Caitlyn, having that range advantage, she will be trying to poke her out as much as possible. Yeah. However, I do think it is uh, a pretty smart decision on the Zaya with that cleanse. Oh, looks like oh, a little Jarvan actually up. coming in for an early gank level two. Flag and drag does land with the knockup on the cast and enforce a flash away here under the tower. Great early gank here coming in from Green Macaroon. Yep, and that was beautifully, beautifully pathed by the Jarvan, able to just go red to mid, force the flash, and now cast in without that flash or that level six to go. Oh, oh, and you can see action. Leona actually canceling that dash from Camille, but she's still engaging here with that attack damage shield. Leona returning quite a significant amount of damage. Camille actually walking away. Oh, and yeah, we do see. Oh, oh, sorry. You, you go ahead. Sorry about that. We do see uh, Camille does have that kleptomancy. She's going to be able to farm a lot of gold off this Leona as she doesn't have too much kill pressure, I would say, in the top lane. But we'll just have to see how it goes as she does go conquer uh, on Leona. So we'll see if she's able to pump out this damage in time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was just wanting to say, you know, looking at that Jarvan with the early gank, level 2 really, uh, this is exactly Speaking of that, here seeing. he comes in, he comes in by here, he goes flag and drag, flashes for the knockup, forcing another flash from Nautilus, but it's not enough, he goes down. And now we can see a fight here. Leona actually returning a lot of damage to this. Camille flashes forward with a stun. Force the hook shot out. That was a close one up there too. And Nautilus, not really much he could have done there with that Jarvan engage. Yep, and a beautiful engage again from the Jarvan Harbor. This time with the flag drag flash, able to knock them up and secure a kill for Alpha Blue right there. Yeah, you know, Lee Sin, you know, he is also an early uh, game uh, ganker, but we haven't seen anything happening yet. Looks like he is roaming into the enemy jungle. He was spotted by a ward. Um, he's just not getting the gank stuff that he should be, you know, with Jarvan applying this constant pressure. We're going to want to try to see some sort of response. Mm -hmm. And, oh, looks like there might be a little skirmish down here in the bot lane as they are poking them away under the tower. It's going to be a really hard lane for Windermere as there's just so much range and so much poke coming out from Alpha Blue. Yep. And I was a bit surprised. Uh, the Le Leona top is working out kind of in the favor of Alpha Blue, although she is behind. Uh, there is a gold deficit up there in the top lane. She does pump out a lot of damage, so the Camille is going to have to really respect her in that top lane. But both junglers in the top lane right now, yeah. we might be able to see a skirmish. You see yeah, both we... junglers not aware of each other's presence as Leona actually engaging first, taking a lot of damage here. Da tries to dash away here with her Zenith Blade, but nothing she is able to really do there. Yeah. That was a big wave pushing in here in top lane. Jarvan forced to defend it. And we see the first items 
coming out from here from the Leona. Looks like a longsword and rejuvenation bead. She might be looking to build a team match just for that wave clear, help her, you know, uh, in lane against this Camille who will be hard shoving a lot against this Leona. Yeah, you can see Morgana constantly walking up looking for that dark binding. Coming pretty close to the other people, but they don't really want to get too much against Nautilus because he is pretty tanky and can also return a lot of CC. Yeah, just yep. looking into the mid lane now real quick. Uh, earlier I was talking about having that um, melee versus range disadvantage, but it actually looks like Cassidan is um, faring better. He does have the uh, CS lead. He is getting the back while Orion is forced to stay in lane. He's now getting the catalyst five minutes in. Mm -hmm. And you would think that uh, the gank early from... Oh. Oh, Morgana actually walking up here trying to cancel that Nautilus recall. He just dredge lines away. He's all good. And now Camille actually looking to engage in the top lane. Gets stunned up here by that Leona. Pretty good defensive play from this Leona here. Getting as much CS as she really can. And Camille kind of realizing that if she goes in 1v1, there's not really a lot of kill potential for her until she gets that ult. Mm -hmm. And as I said earlier, uh, you would think with that early gank from... Jarvan forcing the flash from the cast in the Oriana would uh, fare better in lane. However, she is seeming to struggle in terms of CS. Uh, but however, now that she has her first reset, she might be able to do. Oh, Camille's level six now here. Going in here, maybe we'll see Hextech ultimatum. But she is just asserting her dominance here in this lane. Leona forced to just kind of walk away. She goes up for this farm. Actually, it's kind of a risky situation for her though. Mm -hmm. However, she is very tanky, uh, so it's going to be really hard for that Camille to kill her. Uh, maybe we'll see some more help from the Lee Sin. Actually, oh. Dredgeline goes in, but the spell shield's very good on this Morgana's part here. Solar blocking all that CC and just walk back up to their tower. And I actually see J4 here flanking from the behind. Did not even see this. He's returning a little bit of auto attacks onto the Zaya here, but switches aggro onto the Nautilus, who is rooted for so long by that Dark Binding, as well as the Yordle Snap Trap. And now Shockwave actually landing on the Zaya. Hi, I'm fam, under pressure. Cleanse comes out, but not enough here. She goes down as well. And that was a beautiful call from the side of Alpha Blue, able to rotate down the mid laner as well as the jungler and really clean up clean up both those kills. Oh, actually, Hulk has like ultimatum, goes down on the Leona. She returns a stun here, but Lee Sin is here to help her or to help uh, Camille out on this 2v1. Leona forced to walk away here. Not much she can do here, getting slowed by the red buff, and she goes down as well. Ooh, quite an unfortunate situation for the Leona. She does have no mana either. There is no way out for her right there. Yeah, I just want to say what a great job uh, the red team had done on that part uh, in the bot lane. You know, we did have the rotations from initially Jarvan and then also Orianna later on to be able to pick up both of the kills. And then later in the top lane, we do see that Lee Sin ganking. You know, he was finally responding to something that the red team had been doing so well before. So I should Drake going, uh, going down here for Alpha Blue, but Lee Sin actually coming in here to maybe secure Steel. Smite does come out for J4, but he might be in trouble here. Teleport coming out from Windermere. J4 getting the Black Shield on him, forced to flash away as well. Oh, Lee Sin with a great kick on the Morgana. Will it be enough to take her down? Actually returns Ooh. to the Cataclysm here. Taking down Lee Sin. But now mm -hmm. Nautilus here stunning up this Caitlyn, who is forced to run away back to her tower. She might be under a dive here, but we're not sure. And then you can see four members of Ooh. Windermere actually going in there. Great dash up there by the Camille, securing that kill on the Caitlyn. And a small mistake from the Caitlyn. She walks up a little bit too far and gets rooted by the Zaya recall feathers. And then that's just, that marks the end of her life as Camille jumped in there right after and cleaned up the kill. Yeah, I think she did feel that she had a bit of reassurance with that big minion wave there. However, to no avail, she still died. Yep. And that was a beautiful response from Windermere, seeing that they were starting the dragon. Uh, you know, just see teleport. a little bit of uh, taking some plates over in the bot lane. Morgana walking up, though. She's able to get them off of it. Uh, looking at the item differences right now, actually, between the two ADCs, it looks like Zaya probably will be backing now. But uh, we do see that BF and Pickaxe for the Caitlyn versus just the two Longswords. Leona taking this pink cord, actually gets engaged on here by the Camille, doing a lot of damage. Lee Sin's here to help her out. The Solar Flare comes out, but I don't think it's enough. Leona goes down again to another Lee Sin gank. Now a little bit of action here in the river. Actually, Lee Sin landing the Sonic Wave on J4 with damage combined from Cassidy, and he goes down as well. 
and it looks like Windermere answering back from this weak early game, and now they're just getting kills on the board. Pretty exciting here, actually. Cassidy and walking up, you see the explosive damage that he actually does there in the mid lane. Now Nautilus, steaming in the bot lane, walking up a little bit, but doesn't want to overextend too much against this dark binding. Just shy. Now Nautilus can actually have a little bit of pressure coming up here now that knowing that he won't be snared, but Caitlyn a little bit too strong here in this lane. And it looks like Jarvin pathing down here. He might look for a potential dive if they get the wave into the tower. However, is spotted out and looks to be backing off as the Kastin does move down as well. Yeah, you see a lot of people actually Camille going in again on this Leona. She cannot catch a break here with that CS deficit, as you can see. But she actually lands a Zenith Blade. She's going in. Oh, and it looks like a pause is actually coming out here. Oh, and it looks like the top laner for Windermere has disconnected. And that's why the Leona decided to yeah. jump right in right there. Hopefully he will reconnect soon and we can get this game back on track. Mm -hmm. And uh, this game was actually really interesting as... We saw early game, the Jarvan making a lot of plays on the map. However, Windermere, oh. And now you can see the unpause coming in. You can just go straight up to Nautilus here, dying. But Zaya actually looking to 2v1 get a kill here. And Lee Sin coming in with a Sonic Wave to secure the kill on the Morgana. Great ult from the Zaya on her part. And now Lee Sin flashing up with the kick. Misses the Sonic Wave though, gets kited oh, around by the Caitlyn and actually goes down. Oh, and Kassadin deleting that. Oh my god. <laughs> he delayed the teleport. I can't even I'm delaying the teleport. I can't I'm the lost for words here. You know, it's so amazing. Oh, and oh, now Cataclysm are going bot lane! Stopwatch coming out for the J4! Surviving the now Nautilus! Snaring him up! Goes down finally! So and much stuff going on here, I couldn't even keep track of it. And what is happening in this game is all over the map, there's so much action. <laughs> and honestly, that was a great start from the cast and able to delay that Oriana and turn the fight of fight in the bot lane towards the favor of Windermere. However, he goes for a botched dive under the tower and gets punished by the Oriana. Now Morgana looking to take this tower here and another pause coming out here. Mid is lagging. <laughs> okay, well hopefully mid lane stops lagging because this game is it's heating up, guys. Quite a fiesta so far in this game as action all over the map. I want to give praise to the Lee Sin. He's been able to answer so many of these ganks by Jarvan now, and it's really turning in the favor of Windermere here. And on that play where the Kassadin cancels the channel of the teleport, it's huge, huge play there coming out. Mm -hmm. However, he does end up doing the misplay, trying to dive the Oriana while she still has the shockwave up. He does get hit by it. He does die, and Oriana did survive with just a sliver of health after that. Yep. This and now true. the map. Yep. The now mount. Sorry. Now map is reset, and it looks like, you know, Windermere has that small gold lead, and we'll see if they can keep making these proactive plays with the Lee Sin. And what do you personally think about this Leona Camille matchup now that we have seen 11 minutes? Oh, just kidding. The game is coming on. You can still tell me about that matchup and how you think about it, though. Oh, yeah. To answer your question, uh, as I predicted, Leona will have a hard time in lane. Uh, she's probably looking to just go even with Camille, as I said, or not die too many times to succeed over too many gold, but uh, too much gold. But uh, however, she will be a force to be reckoned with with her ultimate in those team fights. Mm, yeah, come team fights it will be. However, I do think that um right now in the laning phase it is not doing too good of a job. Um she she does go for fights more often than I think she did than she should. She doesn't have And Brandon Wu coming taking out. more damage. Yeah, uh could you repeat that please? Oh, sorry guys. Um, yeah, I was just saying, in this laning phase, it is having a bit of a difficult time, Leon is. Um, she having that, uh, conquer instead of- Oh, Speaking actually- that, Lena, Zenith Blade coming out here, trying to contest that damage that Camille's doing to the tower, but Camille with that attack damage shield not taking a lot from Leona, but she still is going in here! Hexac Ultimato coming in, Solar Flare missing, Lee Sin there, once again, to assist the Camille in the 2v1. Leona is 0-4 right now. And, ooh, looks like there is a- 
potential dive down here. However, at the top side, they are taking away that first tower, and the first tower does go to Windermere. No, actually, no, it went to um, Alpha. It went to Alpha, yeah. They took in the bot lane faster. Oh, you're right. Oh, my lord. Uh, excuse me right there. Uh, I did misspeak. Uh, however, I do want to commend this uh, Lee Sin. He, he recognizes that Leona has this weak early game stage against this Camille, and he go keeps going up there to get this Camille ahead and ahead uh, in kills against this Leona. And now with both top and bot towers taken, the map kind of opens up here for both teams. You can see them making some more plays like this in the middle here. Shockwave and the Jarvan Cataclysm combo, like we were talking about. Nothing Lee Sin can do there. He goes down. Yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. That Cataclysm Shockwave combo is just going to be too strong. Imagine that with three or four members of the enemy team inside of it, it will be lethal and it would most likely be a win for the red team. And now Windermere looking to take the bot tower, but as well, they should be looking to get this Rift Herald Eye that's in the middle of the river. And it looks like the Kassen will be able to sneak in there and grab it. Uh, he might be and... under some, uh, he might be in some trouble here. Actually, uh, Rift walks away, but there's three members of Alpha Blue chasing him around. He's kiting, jumps over the wall here, but oh, the Caitlyn securing it with her last minute Q. Ooh, great snipe there. Yeah, however, they do receive that uh, Rift Herald. So we'll see if they can uh, use it on the mid lane to grab that last outer defensive turret on the side oh, of... Oh, and Neil walking up out of vision here with that J4. Just gets completely destroyed here by three of the members. Does what she can, but it's looking like she's going to go down as well as her top turret. And an answer from Alpha Blue as they now siege the top side of the map. And a bit of a lane swap going here. Leona trying to get as much gold as she can. She does come out with that team at. It should help her clear the waves a lot faster. And we'll see if she can get back into this game before those major team fights break out. Yeah, Alpha playing those rotations really well. You know, once they get that bot tower, they do rotate with the top lane, uh, swapping lanes, taking that tower. It looks like now they will be trying to go forward at the mid lane push instead. And we might start to see more of these team fights happen now. And as we can see, uh, Alpha Blue really prioritizing vision on river and on the rivers in the jungle rather than inside their own jungle. Uh, on the opposite side, Windermere, they have a lot of vision on the top side enemy jungle. So we'll see if they can look for some picks in the enemy jungle. Ooh. And now, Alpha Blue looking to siege this mid tower. And Windermere are doing what they can against this Caitlyn's long range here. She is they... six and one. Ooh, looks like Rift Herald being spawned at the bottom of the map. Perhaps trying to do a little damage on this. Oh, dredge line comes out. However, there was a black shield to block it. And we'll see if this Rift Herald can get in any damage before he's taken down. Looks like Leona is able to just stun him up and actually might go down before he even charges into the tower. Yeah, Kassadin just really trying to clear this wave here so Shelly can get just one dash in here. But Leona doing a great job of keeping that wave there. But it does look like Shelly will eventually get some damage on this uh, bot lane tower here for Alpha Blue. Mm -hmm. And not too much coming out from Shelly. Uh, however, Lee Sin oh, yeah. and Kassan might get caught right here. Yeah, J4 Swag Flag coming in. Cataclysm gets two of them here. Solar Flare stunning up the Kassan, or not stunning off, slowing him, however. He Rift walks away to safety, but you can see all members here. Actually, Camille Hexec Ultimatum comes in. J4 cannot escape from that. He goes down, with and you can Zaya. see Zaya returning with the damage here. Two kills picking up for her. And Leona is taking damage as well as the Morgana. And it looks like Windermere actually comes on top of that. Yeah, Camille. <laughs> yeah. With the, uh, with the Hextech ultimatum there, uh, stopping Jarvan from being able to flag and drag over into the other side, knocking up the uh, bot laner of Windermere. Uh, excellent play there, I would say. Mm -hmm. And Oriana wasn't even there for that fight, unable to do a combo at all. And beautiful play by that bot lane from Windermere, uh, picking out, you know, the Caitlyn and the Leona with that Zaya, just tons of damage in those team fights. And you can see Alpha Blue has kind of split that fight, and the Camille did really well separating the team there with her X-Tech ultimatum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was about to say that uh, K1 was going to be the person you want to look out for in these team fights. However, when you're in melee range with a long gun, that is not what you want to be doing. Yeah. 
and we can see the extent of this lead that was given to the Camille by the Lee Sin, and she's able to just tear up those fights now. And no. uh, we do see synchronized resets from Windermere. I do like this communication and teamwork from them. Now that they're all reset, they should be able to gain more map control now that they all have control wards and perhaps take this dragon away from Alpha Blue. And you can see Alpha Blue is just taking this, but Camille looking to Lee Sin. And oh, Lee Sin steals it actually. Camera didn't even catch that, but Lee Sin actually ends up stealing it for Windermere. Oh my god, what what a great steal from the Lee Sin. He's been having a fantastic game all game. He stole the dragon. He's been keeping this Camille up the entire time. He's been answering with these counter ganks against the Jarvan. He, he's probably the rock of this team right now, able to dig him out of a lot of these deficits that they should have been in. Yeah, we do see Zaya. She was pinging where her ultimate was in terms of the cooldown, and it looks like it will be up now. And next, for, in time for this next team fight, we will possibly see something happen here. OJ4 swag flag coming out, flag and drag, looking to get the Cassidy, in, but Riftwalk is just too safe. He can be able to escape. Yeah, I want to say um the uh, a lot of the players on the blue team here very mobile champions. We got Camille with the hook shot. We have Lee Sin. He has multiple forms of uh traveling with his W and his Q. Cassidy with his ult, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very mobile team. They're probably going to look to dive these potential carries from... Oh, oh, and you can see Camille actually coming in here on this Orianna, just auto-attacking her to death. Shockwave comes in, but it's not enough. Hexagon Ultimatum picks up kill, but now she is oh, able to repel actually away, but Morgana is on the chase here, looking to take down this Camille, but she is a little bit too tanky. Caitlyn actually coming in here with the support, able to maybe finish her off. Ult comes out, will it be enough? Yes, it will. Yeah, the Camille auto going ult down. there. Yeah, and Camille uh, overstepping just a little, trying to get that Orianna pick on the bottom. Oh, oh. out of vision, gets on the Camille, or the Caitlyn, takes her down immediately, just bursts her down, nothing she could have done. And now Morgana is caught out 2v1 against the Nautilus and Lee Sin. She goes down as well. Ooh. And as I mentioned earlier, Windermere prioritizing vision in the enemy jungle rather than the river wards and it gets them quite a few picks right there Yeah, yeah I just want to commend Lee Sin there with that combo You know, he starts with the sonic wave He jumps in with the safeguard onto a ward dragons rages him away and then with the sonic wave or the re resonating trike actually there with the executing damage to uh, finish it off Yeah, I nope. see Windermere taking this Baron here a little bit of a slow take but Alpha Blue still in their base. Yeah, they have Probably no not wanting to contest it. No vision on this Baron. Yeah. And it looks like they'll just be able to take this without any contesting. Yeah. Alpha Blue a little too late on the on the uh, answer here on that Baron taken. It's just a clean Baron's take for uh, Windermere. Mm -hmm. However, with that reset, I'm looking at Alpha Blue to perhaps regain vision control of their jungle. Uh, so it's a bit safer for the carries to walk through. Uh, but it doesn't look like that will happen. Windermere does still have wards inside the enemy jungle. And Windermere resetting here, buying new items. You can see that Lee Sin with the 400 gold bounty on his head. He is doing great in this game. Contesting this J4 early game as well as now. And capitalizing on the lack of vision that Alpha Blue has in their own jungle. Mm-hmm. And I really do like these synchronized backs from Windermere. It really shows that they have teamwork and communication down, that they're able to play off each other. And I really like it from Windermere. That's right. I do want to say, even though the kills are pretty similar, um, we almost see a, a 10k gold lead for yeah. the side of Windermere. It's a barren power play if we had that on the screen there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as well as uh, CS deficits from both teams, uh, Lee Sin, Camille, uh, and the Kassadin uh, just out CSing their opponents. Yeah, Camille actually up more than 100 CS on this Leona. And now and Lee now Sin out of vision again, looking uh, Sonic Wave lens, but he does not want to take that. Now Camille actually caught out here in the bot lane, forced to grappling hook away. Uh, Morgana landing a snare here, but does not actually want to fight that. J4 there to try and assist him, but she goes back in actually with the Zonias, gets stunned up, but it's not enough. She goes down. 
Mm -hmm. And a bit of a miscommunication there. You can see Organa continues to go in. On oh, Lee oh. Sin up there with the giant kick. The Kaelin goes right into the team. And Shockwave oh. returns with the Cataclysm. That was a great counter engage there from Alpha Blue. Yeah, and that Shockwave Jarvan EQ is so strong. Able to shut down the bot lane. I wonder how Oh, you can see Cassidy coming in here. Zenith Blade landing. Jarvan going in here, engaging on this Cassidy, and he does go down. And now we're left here with, with Guardian Angel coming out. No way that this Lee Sin is able to escape here. And great counter engages here from Alpha Blue, keeping this together. And now you can see Camille here taking that inhibitor. Most likely going to go down for it, but actually trying to return a kill here before she goes down. A little bit short of getting that kill in the Morgana, but still gets that inhibitor. Yeah, and Jarvan with a beautiful flag and drag flash right there to save that Morgana's life, able to knock up that Camille. Uh, and Windermere overstayed right there and got punished for it. Yeah, you can see that botched engage as well. The Orianna Shockwave combo with the J-Force Cataclysm is just too strong for them to make these 5v5 fights, especially under their own tower. Mm -hmm. yep. And earlier I was worried about Alpha Blue's communication right there. Uh, however, it looks like they're now back in the game. I would say this time it was actually uh, Windermere with a little bit of lack of communication. With uh, Camille, she was uh, continuously pushing that bot lane while there was the uh, team fights happening in the mid and top lane. Mm -hmm. They did indeed get the inhibitor for that, so maybe call it a little bit worth, but still, a lot of members of Windermere went down in that fight. Yeah, and now with the base open for Alpha Blue, they're going to have to play a little bit more careful, but let's see if they can force any major fights in their favor. You can see J4 escaping from two members of Windermere here. Just clearing yeah. the vision. Yeah. And it's going to be really, really hard for Blue to get back into this game. However, if they have good vision control in their own jungle, and if they can get these crucial picks, I think that with their wombo combo of Jarvan, Leona, and Oriana, they should be able to win these fights. Yeah, and I'd like to point out actually that. Oh, all right, just kidding. I'd like to point out actually that the Camille or the uh, Caitlyn getting kicked into the team fight still didn't mean that much for Alpha Blue. They were still able to dish out a lot of damage even without their seven and four Caitlyn. Yeah. Uh, talking in terms of vision, we actually do see uh, Windermere. You know, they, I would say they do have uh, the majority of the wards out onto the map, especially on that north and east jungle. However, um, Alpha Blue trying to counter with some of their own vision in that East Jungle, but again, none in the top lane. Not much they can really do about it at the moment. Nautilus consistently roaming, uh, clearing vision with control wards and his sweeper. Yep. And we do see Baron is going to spawn in a minute, so we'll see oh, if Windermere can keep this pressure. Great black shield from Morgana blocking that dredge line CC. She's able to keep herself as well as her teammates out of a lot of sticky situations with that, so using it pretty smart. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see if Windermere play this safe and apply pressure until Baron is up, or we'll see if they go for any risky team fights. Uh, the Cassidy uh, will be online soon with the level 16 and most of his items completed, so we'll see if Alpha Blue can answer with anything. Yeah, I think this is going to be tough, though, for uh, Alpha Blue. You know, we do see that uh, scaling with the uh, Cassidy, and he's almost level 16. Once that happens, his ultimate is going to be near unstoppable. Mm -hmm. uh, the Zaya as well, also a very strength, strong late game AD carry. Uh, mm -hmm. But Caitlyn is also equally as strong, so we'll have to see if uh, Alpha Blue can get that ideal team fight where they go the Jarvan, Leona, Oriana ult, creating space for the Caitlyn to clean up in the back line. And we'll see if that does play out. However, there is a lot of divey champions, as I said earlier, on Windermere. And they're they're going to be looking to shut down that combo, as well as the Caitlyn. Yeah, I think the best tactic that Alpha Blue could take at this point is to wait for another one of those engages where they can capitalize on all their ults and stun up the Windermere team. I feel like that's the way that they can get back into this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... Right now, Alpha Blue waiting for a mistake from Windermere to capitalize on it, as you said earlier. However, they're not giving them a chance as they're playing very safe, waiting for that Baron. And let's see if they start it or melt it. 
Yeah, it looks like it's up right now, Lee Sin. Jumping into the Baron pit here. We have the Nautilus clearing out any excess vision, making sure that Alpha Blue does not see this. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Alpha Blue most likely willing to give this up. They're probably not going to want to start a fight in the Baron pit. Uh, you can also see Camille applying a lot of pressure in the bot lane. Leona missing her Zenith Blade here. Getting a stun though on the Camille, but Camille goes straight towards the Caitlyn, looks to burst her down, but she dashes over the wall and actually dies for it. Ooh, and that was a good Hextech ultimatum, dodging the flag and drag from Jarvan. However, beautifully played by the Caitlyn, able to just net over the wall and stay at a safe distance and just whittle down that Camille. Yeah, Windermere here though, I don't think they're going to make as much of an impact as they would like to with this Baron buff because they do not have the Camille them with them they're with them to be able to lock down uh, an enemy champion yep. and quite a mistake right there from the camille knowing that uh, alpha blue wasn't going to contest that baron uh, they weren't dancing around it at all and still stayed there in the bot lane to get caught out yeah i do appreciate them trying to uh uh commit with some pressure however i think he ended up giving up too much. yeah yeah yep. At 10 seconds, we do see another uh, Infernal Dragon. Oh, and actually Morgana forced a flash away here. Now Leona is in a tight situation here. Caitlyn with the Nautilus hold on her flashes away. Morgana going down. Dredge Lane lands on the Caitlyn. She goes down. And now they're pushing up mid here. Oriana looking to run away for her life, but is not able to. And now you can see the jungle. Actually, Kassadin, 1v1 in the J4, watches the Leona here trying to recall. Takes her down as well. And that is an ace for Windermere. Yeah, and that also should be the game for Windermere. Um, yeah, we, we do see 30 and 40 second death timers on the side of Alpha. They are pushing. They don't even need the minions. Yeah, minions have arrived, though, with that Baron buff. It's looking like these towers are toast. Yeah, a critical mistake from Alpha Blue, pushing up to that mid lane, having barely any vision at all in in the side uh, jungle. So they were punished for it. And looks like that will be the game for Windermere. Yeah, GG to every player in that match, though. All played very well. Mm -hmm. Very exciting game. And it looks like Windermere comes out on top in this matchup against Alpha Blue. Um, Alex, would you want to mention any uh, highlights that you found especially valuable uh, during this game? Um, I thought that the Leona was a very audacious pick. Uh, if it worked out, it would have worked out wonderfully. However, she was punished heavily in lane by that Lee Sin, by that Camille. Uh, Windermere playing that matchup out really well, understanding that there was a weakness on the top side and that, you know, they they focused the top side. Uh, beautifully played from Windermere. Uh, other than that, I wouldn't say there was too many major mistakes uh, by Alpha Blue. They were really just outscaled, and they they did have some critical mistakes in those team fighting. Make, uh, decision making, but uh, in the end, it looks like Windermere did play a better game. Uh, Jonathan? I'd have to emphasize on the Lee Sin actually providing mm -hmm. a huge presence in this game here for Windermere. Uh, every time J4 seemed to want to engage on something, he seemed to be uh, always there with the Sonic Wave and all the abilities here to counter gank this J4. You can see early on in the game, though, J4 was making a little bit more plays, but the Lee Sin just had to wait a little bit to get those items, get online here, and then he was just up and at it everywhere, mm -hmm. getting all these ganks, getting that Camille ahead against that Leona. You can see, I think it was like three three or four times, you can see that Lee Sin up in there in the uh, top lane, 2v1ing that Leona. Mm -hmm. And for yourself, Brandon, you have any last comments you would like to add? Um, For me personally, I actually want to give a... Uh... I think that other people uh, underappreciate. A shout out to a uh, Dwarf Destroyer One um, with that a uh, constant vision in the top lane. You know when they were prepping for the Baron as well as when they were kind of just playing safe. They don't want to get caught out at all, but the, by applying pressure constantly in the mid lane, they were able to do it. They were able to clear out vision consistently, and then they were able to take that Baron scotch free. Yeah, I do agree with you. However, I have to give my MVP uh, award to the Lee Sin, able to make mm. so many proactive plays around the map. And uh, thank you guys for joining us today in our exciting match of Windermere versus Alpha Blue. We'll catch you guys next time on The Rift. Uh, this, is ha this has been Alex Nguyen, uh, Brandon Wu, and Jonathan Ramirez. We will be signing out. See you later. Have a good night.